will discover, explore, discovery service, the research community dashboard, or connect for those who know it, and the provide dashboard. So we start first with explore and Katerina. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Katerina Yadropoulou from Athena Research Center, and together we'll see a little bit about explore and uh, how you can discover the open air research graph through explore okay uh, if we want to make an overview the open air explore uh, has um, two parts let's say the the one is the open air search portal for open access scholarly works uh, globally uh, you can see here the website the url for the website and last year we had uh, a little bit more than half a um, million uh, users unique users and it is also uh, the other part is the open air apis that you can uh, see um, under developed .openair.eu, uh, where last year we had uh, 25 million um, unique page views for, for our APIs, and uh, some of the APIs, in particular the OpenAir Search API, is directly connected to the EU participant portal. Uh, of course, it is open and free for everyone. Um, there are certain functionalities that are accessible only to registered users, but uh, of course the registration is free. And uh, soon we will introduce um, better rate limits for uh, requests to our APIs that are authenticated. Uh, so Open Air Explore uh, enables research discovery for all, and therefore making open access research accessible in Europe and beyond. And in Open Air Explore, users can query and navigate uh, the Open Air uh, Research Graph, but they can also enhance uh, the Research Graph by claiming semantic links between uh, the entities of our graph. So it is ideal for researcher, research community, uh, project managers, funder, content providers, and all of the users who are interested who are interested in the in the um, uh, research outcomes. Uh, to use the Open Air Explorer, you can directly visit and navigate the Open Air Explorer portal uh, where you can find um, search forms uh, when you can, where you can put uh, your uh, keywords to make keyword uh, search and you can find filters uh, there uh, for every research output you will find a dedicated page where all the metadata and all uh, the links to the other research outcomes are available and if we want to zoom uh, in uh, such uh, a page. Uh, here is an example uh, where apart from the a part of the metadata that are visible there, um, you can also see on the right uh, hand side of the screen the action uh, that a user uh, can do to enhance uh, the record that uh, is visible. Um, and therefore enhance uh, the already and uh, the already existing entities in the open air uh, research graph. Uh, for uh, for the open air APIs, you can uh, visit develop.openair.eu, uh, where you can see the documentation and ways to access uh, all of our APIs. Um, uh, apart from ops, sorry. <laughs> not good, good with cameras. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we have the linked open data API, the search APIs, where you can look for uh, projects and research outcomes. And we have also uh, links there to the dumps uh, that um, you can find is in auto as uh, previously uh, said uh, for uh, the functionalities that I mentioned that uh, 
specific users uh, need to be registered. Uh, for, for that reason, you can authenticate uh, through the EUSC uh, partners uh, account. Uh, so uh, our position in the open air uh, ecosystem, uh, you can see that basically we are uh, a service on top of the open air uh, research graph, but uh, apart from only displaying the contents of the open air research graph, uh, we have also functionalities to enhance uh, to enhance them, and also in many cases we are the place where not only the research graph but other services of open air can uh, show their uh, results. For example, um, we display in certain uh, uh, resources uh, statistics or uh, usage uh, metrics for the records that uh, we display. Uh, for uh, for that to um, become true, uh, we're basically um, we basically build on top of the indexing that it is available on the research graph, and of course on top of the APIs of the other services uh, that are available in Open Air. So uh, for EOS, we can say that it gives EOS users access and enhancement functionality to EOS uh, resources. So the takeaway message uh, that, can, that I can give you is that you can use Explore uh, Discovery Services to find and enhance open scholarly works. Thank you. So thank you very much, Katerina. What I realized for discovery is that no, it's not just discover and find the search data. It's about, you know, it's beyond that. It's also use the ORCID, use the uh, B2 node, use more add-ons uh, services on top of this, uh, of Explore. Mm -hmm. And it will be nice, you know, for all the people that attend this uh, live event. Uh, you know, to, to send us any extra features, requirements that they would like to see on Explore, uh, you know, something that will be the next big add-on on Explore. It will be really nice for us to have this nice feedback in the future. Yes, it's it's true that it not only um, is the place to to see open air research graph and some of the results of other open air services, but we are also connected to third parties like ORCID, which will be the next big addition to Open Air Explore, where the users will come and claim their works through the Open Air uh, portals, uh, the Open Air Explore portal. Yeah. And also we have annotation services like B2 Note, um, just to mention some of the most, uh, let's say, striking ones. Thank you, Andronik. Yeah, thank you very much. And now we can continue with the research community dashboard or the well-known Connect and Alessia. Okay, so... Um... I am Alessia Bardi from the Institute of Information Science and Technologies of the Italian National Research Council. And I'm presenting the Connect service, which is also called uh, the Research Community Dashboard. And what is this service for? Um, it delivers on-demand open research gateways for research communities. And each gateway is basically a um, community specific slice of the open air research graph. And in addition to the discovery portal, we also uh, include in the gateway uh, tools to support the implementation of open science publishing practices for specific research communities. So um, by uh, by the service, by the uh, research community dashboard, you can have a web portal dedicated for your community. And the community content is also available via the open air API that Katerina uh, described uh, a few minutes ago. 
and the dumps are also published on Zenodo. And currently we are serving 11 communities and nine already have a public gateways, while uh, in two cases, we are still working on that. So for example, we have uh, the gateway about uh, coronavirus disease for agriculture and food science, for digital humanities and cultural heritage and uh, transport research, for example. While we are working together with the communities for energy, sustainable energy research and science and innovation policies. So why to use the Open Air Research Community Dashboard? Uh, because it lowers the barriers to open science in the research community. So we, know, we all know how difficult it is to discover uh, scientific data and literature that are relevant because we are in a literature data deluge and uh, the research products are uh, scattered across different sources and, uh, and thanks to the research graph we are putting these all together again and this enables to effectively uh, build a collection uh, a graph that is relevant for the community. And of course, we also address uh, the lack of community awareness. And with awareness, I mean the awareness of open science practices, but also awareness of the community itself. Um, because um, the, being able to build the community, grow the community, and uh, being part of something that is uh, more than a, a set of users is very important and we help in doing this. And the last barriers that we uh, try to um, pull down is the lack of open science publishing services and tools. So for those communities that do not have a research infrastructure so already offering some open science services. We offer support for their implementation and we also offer ready to use service services. And why it is unique? It is unique because the community curators have full control on the gateway. They have full control on the configuration in terms of content, functionality, and soon also for the look and feel. Uh, already in part, but we will uh, make it even more configurable. So how to use it? So the research community dashboard and all the public gateways are accessible via the Connect web portal, so connect.openair.eu, and also through the EOSC portal. And this is a service that uh, you can use on request. So on connect.openair.eu, you will find a contact form where um, a research community can uh, ask for more information and can request a gateway for the community. And in order to build it, we follow um, a participatory process. Um, and here you can see the four main steps. So, First of all, we understand the needs of the community to understand which are the gaps that the, the, they would like to address uh, within our collaboration. We develop a pilot. Uh, we test and validate uh, the quality of the content, so the, the coverage uh, in terms of content, but also the algorithm that we apply to identify the research products that are relevant for the community. And eventually we roll out the service, which may be available uh, only to the managers at the beginning because we need to fine tune uh, something, but eventually it will go public. And uh, the community creators uh, can configure a lot of things, as I was saying, and they have a dedicated uh, administration dashboard for this, so they can uh, set their logos, they can uh, curate uh, the user claims, uh, they can specify the criteria by which we should include the content in their gateway and many other things. In the end, what we get is a portal with um, 
where you can discover the research products of the community, where users can add uh, research products that have not yet been included, thanks to the linking functionality that Katerina was also describing before uh, for Discover, uh, for Explore, sorry. Uh, we also have uh, configura configurable menus and pages in the gateway that can host information about best practices, guidelines, suggestions to the research communities. And also um, a direct link where we can find information on where to deposit. So suggestions on the repositories and the archives uh, to be used uh, to be used because they are typical of the domain, but also specific uh, Zenodo communities that are relevant uh, for, this, for this goal. So how we are positioned in the EOS and the, in the open air ecosystem. So uh, the research community dashboard is a service which is registered in the EOS catalog. And thanks to it, we can deliver community gateways, and they are also registered in the EOS catalog. Um, the service that uh, is the most important for, for the gateways is, of course, the open air research graph, because basically, thanks to the gateway configuration, we are able to uh, discover which are the products that are relevant for the community. And these are made available on the portal and also on uh, dedicated uh, dumps on Zenodo. So we have one dedicated dump for the COVID-19 uh, community, for example, and the other communities have their content in another uh, specific uh, dump. The takeaway message. The research community dashboard is the open air service that delivers configurable open research gateways for research communities. And is the service by which open air supports community building, strengthening and empowering with open science tools. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and now, let's now proceed with the provide dashboard with Pedro. Yeah, thank you, uh, Droniki, and um, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to present here the, the Open Air dash, uh, Dashboard for content providers. Um, I'm part of the Open Air team and I'm representing here the, the management team of this service that mainly target um, content providers, uh, managers. So the, this dashboard, this provide uh, dashboard is a, a one-stop shop uh, web service where um, all the data source managers can interact with uh, with open air and and this this web service uh, have a different um different open air uh, services and functionalities uh, uh, available um the first one is uh, the the possibility uh, to use the validator so to validate uh, the data source against the the, the open air guidelines and to test uh, the compatibility of the data source um so the first service in this dashboard is the, the validator. Uh, if the validation, the validation is uh, well succeed, uh, so uh, a data source can proceed to, to, for the, to, to the, re the registration process. Uh, and um, the second service is the registration. So uh, it's in the open air provide dashboard that um, those that want to be part of uh, the open air infrastructure can register uh, um, their uh, content provider repository, publication repository, data repository, or, or open access journal, or CRIS system, etc. Um, after being re re registered, uh, we have here uh, in the provide dashboard the, the information um, about uh, the aggregation history, uh, where the, the managers of that of each data source can track the the aggregation stage, the number of records aggregated by open air, etc. Then, because we have this uh, rich um, information space, this relevant research graph, we can provide uh, added value uh, information back to those that are contributing with data to open air infrastructure. 
and via the, the broker service, we can uh, send uh, metadata enrichments to uh, repository managers, to content provider managers. So via the open air dashboard, provide dashboard, uh, we have also the broker enrichment um, metadata events available, which is one of the um, uh, most relevant services available in provide. Then uh, the users counts service, uh, targeting uh, content providers uh, related with downloads, views, the access to different kinds of reports and, and graphics are available also in, in, in provide dashboard. And, um, and of course, the, the, the broker service uh, to be um, uh, received, uh, you can see the events, but you can also subscribe events and this will be available in the notifications. So validate, register, collection, monitor, enrich, measure, notifications are components of this uh, open air dashboard that is this uh, one-stop uh, shop service for all uh, content providers. So the provide dashboard is in fact the kind of front end, ex, uh, front -end um, access uh, to many of the back end services. So you can access the, the broker service that is in fact the back end service that benefit from the, the open air research graph. Uh, you can access, you can um, uh, test uh, the open air guidelines. You can understand better understand the, the, the policy, the data acquisition and the data uses policies that we do, that we have. So the, the target are repository managers, uh, data or literature, publications, data archive managers, CRI system managers, so publishers, the open access journals, um, editors, um, those that manage this kind of uh, scientific uh, information systems, uh, libraries, uh, national aggregators, because we have also the possibility to register aggregators. Uh, we can say that uh, all those that are direct uh, data sources registered in open air can benefit from this service. We are talking about over um, 1,500 um, uh, users, direct users, and then of course we can have more. And, uh, and just some highlights to the user value. Uh, so we are talking about uh, possibility to, to, of course, to understand and to track the um, the aggregation of, of, of each data source, but of course the most important is to improve repository uh, collections, uh, to comply with funder, with funder um, rules, requirements, um, to improve the visibility uh, of, of, of each content providers via being compatible with, with the metadata guidelines, uh, so improve the repository uh, interoperability. So this is a little bit of the reasons why to use the, the provide dashboard. Two, two slides related with how to use the provide uh, dashboard. Basically what is important to understand that this is a, an open service free to register and to use. Of course, uh, the, the component uh, that is open or completely free uh, to, regi to register and to use is the one related with the validator and the registration. So you can create a login uh, access the, the, the dashboard and, and play with the, the validator, test your data source and proceed for the registration. All the other features are only available after uh, you are part of the open air infrastructure, after you have done the registration. So um, first you can validate and register and then once you are registered, you can then play with all the other features and services that I have already presented the broker events, so subscribe and refine the metadata enrichments, uh, start receiving uh, notifications, enable the, 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 the metric service, the user's count service, and, and track also monitor a little bit, uh, a little bit the collection uh, that is being aggregated by OpenAir. So this is important to understand this difference, what is fully available and that what is only available for those that are part of the, of the OpenAir infrastructure. Um, and and and, uh, and and then uh, so we have this dashboard. <laughs> um, we are always trying to improve the dashboard to better fit the user, the end user needs. Um, we are doing always our best, uh, running uh, workshops and and user tests to improve 
the, the capabilities of this service. Uh, what is important to say is that from the side of the validator, the registration, you are able to test compliance, to understand our policies, and to, and to um, provide content uh, to open air and to make your content and your uh, data source more visible in this uh, open science ecosystem. But then benefiting from the, the, being part of, of, um, of uh, open air, uh, you can track uh, uh, the uses of your, of your um, uh, content uh, via the metric service downloads and views. And you can also uh, check some uh, enrichments, metadata enrichments that open air is offering uh, to you um, for the fact that you are part of, um, of open air. And uh, being part of, of, of open air infrastructure, benefiting from this uh, provide dashboard, you are part uh, of, of, of the European Open Science Cloud. So this provide service is the great way uh, to, the, to the OSC. Um, just to, to use or to use the, uh, a slide that usually you present, we present when we are presenting the open air infrastructure, just to position um, the open air provide service. It's, it's a way for you to, to check the, our policies, the guidelines, to test, to validate and to register and to be part uh, of open air, to have the content available in the open air research graph and via uh, uh, this you, are part of the EOSC scientific product catalog. Uh, and uh, so being part of open air is uh, uh, make your content visible also in EOSC. And this is something that we need clearly to highlight. And to finish the, the takeaway, the, the takeaway, I just want to do uh, two important highlights. Uh, one is that this service is, is a stable service, is, is in production since uh, September 2018. Uh, we we are always progressing and doing uh, some updates. Uh, we delivered a new version in May last year, in May 2020, with a different layout, with a more uh, um, user friendly and uh, more like a kind of dashboard uh, to provide uh, um, information to users. Um, but we try to always to integrate improvements, uh, uh, not in a monthly basis, but Every year we are delivering uh, new, um, new um, functionalities or, or um, changing a bit some of the way that we are exposing information to the end user. So it's important to highlight that this is a community-driven services service with a strong focus focus on the end user needs, um, because uh, open air we build open air. Uh, on top of the content that you are providing to open air. So we need also to com properly communicate with, with content provider managers and uh, um, to provide also user value services. So this, this strong focus on use and user needs is also um, achieved by our monthly calls. We have a community, uh, monthly community calls uh, every first Wednesday of the month. Um, we have a, a community call, you can find information in this link, where we present uh, different components of the service, where we get feedback from, from, from end users, and where we also provide information about the novelties and the, and the, and the work in progress uh, related with this, with this service. So many thanks. This was just a short presentation of the, of the Provide Dashboard. Thank you very much, Pedro. It was very interesting. Thank you. And... Now we can start our Q&A session. Uh, yes, all the questions have been answered in the chat, so we're being very, very efficient. So we go we pass on to Menti now. Um, as I said, we're going to record the, the chat, so you, will, you can catch all the, 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 the answers uh, there. So we can move on to the first question. It's a little bit um, from which of the service are you more familiar with? So we can start. You can get the code. I think it's you can find it in the in the in the top of this slide. So that means you you could have used the service in the past, also, or you, you plan to use it maybe in the future. 
let's see, explore research community or connect if you know, remember it as connect and provide. These are the three options. I see almost 20 people here. Yes, but we don't see results. Maybe refresh the, the, yes. the page. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so you see explore is, is number one, provide and then research community dashboard. So I would expect that people are most uh, most known explore because they try to find information. The first thing they do on open air is to to discover information, to find out something they're looking for. A data set, a publication, the most common. Okay. And connect. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can move on, move on to the next one, maybe. Okay. How do you globally assess the value or the interest of these services? So what do you think here? You can compare it, of course, with other tools you might use, other services. The value, it's very personal sometimes, you know, it fits to you, to your needs. So the same question can result totally different uh, outcomes, can give you different, uh, different results, different metrics in another event. So for this one, let's see. It's, it looks like three of them are quite at the same level and close to five. Very, very useful or interesting. And we have 22, two, okay. This is very positive for, uh, for, for all the three services. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to move on to the next one? In each way these services are used for in your daily activities. Again, it's about your own reality, your needs. You can respond. So as a researcher or as a repository manager or mm -hmm. as a as, uh, responsible for a community of researchers. Mm -hmm. So you, you might be a content provider. Yes. Simplify reporting. Mm -hmm. The data as a researcher. So yes, I would expect this is the, the common uh, answer, let's say, or one of the answers that can really fit to many people here in this uh, event. Monitoring. Okay. Yes, but even for repository managers as to mm -hmm. when it comes to inter interoperability and and uh, orientate and comply with the guidelines of open air. So it's important, the, the provide service. Yeah, so also one answer that's about national work, international, so it's a different layer. Mm -hmm. And the community again. So the main things I can see from here is, you know, uh, find information, uh, research products, uh, plus a community, and plus, again, to find the information through, like, let's say, provide. So uh, to have a service that can really help me uh, collect all that information for me to be trustable, to be really valuable. Can you scroll down? and also find them uh, in Explore later. And when I find them in Explore, I might say, mm, I have an idea, I want to connect, to connect with others that have the same uh, topics of interest like me and let's have a community, let's organize and uh, start a research community in yes. Connect. This is, this is where uh, we really need the input from the researchers and the communities because uh, what we are showing today is just, uh, an example of what can be done. So the assumption is we have this full graph, inform, informative graph, put together with links, interlinks between the entities. So we can exploit it at best to offer new advanced discovery functionalities, which are, uh, let's say, not so traditional with respect to the past. First of all, we have all kinds of products in there. 
So what you find in uh, Scholar, you can find it here. What you can find in data site, you can find it here. What you can find in several sources out there, you can find it there in the same place, all interconnected. Now, ideas are welcome because we are exploring possibilities on how to improve research data discovery, for example, which are today not uh, available. We're still relying on simple metadata. And we know how poor this can be. We're trying to move, for example, resource context within the resource data by collecting it from the uh, constellation of uh, products that are surrounding a data set, right? So bringing in information from the rest. Uh, we are trying to apply several ideas, also stolen from, from other fields, which exploit mining. Uh, in the next stage, uh, it's already uh, available in data. We are interconnected with ORCID. So as an ORCID user, when you log into the portal, you can find all your products in there, data, software, publication, and send them to your record in ORCID. So there are several things that we are doing, but your input ideas are extremely welcome. Thank you so much, Paolo. So uh, I don't know if um, any of the speakers, Pedro, um, Alessia or Katerina wants to say something to add more, any comment? To... No, I think uh, there is, uh, there are very good input here in the way that okay. um, these services can, can improve. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, let's have a break now. Uh, to lunch um, for 45 minutes and um, we meet here again at uh, 15 to 2 to o'clock. Okay, so have a nice lunch and talk later. Yes, thank you, Paula.